Want to know how to install a Vesta suspension rail? Well then keep watching for the step-by-step -step tutorial. Hi, my name is Kim with Kim Imagine DIY, where I hope to help you imagine the possibilities with DIYs and crafts. If that sounds like fun, consider subscribing. Now let's just jump right into this project. Here is our messy craft room, office, and studio. This is a leftover furniture from our previous apartment, and I'm rebuilding our old Vesta TV unit in here to help organize our stuff on this wall. The first thing you wanna do is to snap in the plastic clips. Since I am relocating this unit, I already had these clips in. Warning, when you put them in, they are meant to be permanent. I tried to pull one out to show you how they snapped in and nearly broke my cabinet. IKEA's instructions show this image like it's no big deal, but I'm also installing this mostly by myself. So I'm using a self-leveling laser to help me out. I positioned my laser about 91 inches high and six inches from the wall to center my entire unit against this wall. Then I used my stud finder and used blue tape to mark all the studs on the wall. Next, you're going to connect the suspension rail if needed. The hooks on the connector will snap into place on each rail. I also marked a line where the center of the rail would be to help me out in the next steps. To get my first measurement, I found the middle dimension of the double cabinet and marked my line on the wall. Use the suspension rail as a template to mark the holes. Remember to use this groove here to line up with the top of your cabinet line. Since I have upgraded my screw hardware, I'm making two holes per rail with at least one hitting the stud. Disregard any multiple markings you may see. I like to drill a pilot hole first with a small drill bit. And then I opened up the hole with a 3 8 bit for my anchor. Using a hand screwdriver to tighten is recommended, but I used my screw gun at a low torque setting. Next, you wanna attach the suspension rail. Screw in one side, but keep it loose to be able to line up the other mark. Since I upgraded my drywall screws and stud screws, the links are listed in the description box. The drywall screws are rated for 50 to 75 pounds each, depending on the wall type. To be safe, always calculate on the lighter side. These number eight by two and a half inches white cabinet screws are specifically designed for use in cabinet construction and insulation. The washer head design presses flush against any cabinet surface. They use a T15 bit size. These cabinet screws are designed with an easy tip, so no pilot hole is needed. Number seven, attach the cabinet to the suspension rail. Do not be stubborn like I am and grab somebody for help. In my case, my nephew Matt to help lift the cabinet onto the suspension rail. Then I like to shift the cabinet around to make sure it sits on it correctly. To secure the cabinet onto the rail, you can use the provided screws. I have lost most of them during the two moves, but to be extra safe, if the holes line up with the studs, I decided to use a cabinet screw. Since I had the towers already constructed, I wanted to double check my measurements so that they could fit underneath. Thankfully, it worked. You can continue using these seven steps for each cabinet. The instructions suggest working on the next adjacent cabinet. I decided to flip-flop my towers instead of converting the four doors or eight hinges to open in the direction I desired. Now that I have my towers in place, I am comfortable locking in all the top row cabinet to the suspension rails, but I did need to troubleshoot to make a straight line. You see that there is some wiggle room in the channel to move the cabinet. But when I was screwing the cabinet onto the suspension rail, it started to pull apart. The tighter I screwed it in, it increased the gap. I removed the screw and then started to see which holes aligned better with just the Phillips screwdriver. 
The one that lined up best, I chose to screw in first. Then I held the cabinet into position and clamped it together. I grabbed some extra wood screws, but made sure it wouldn't go completely through the other side. After screwing in the top screw, I needed to move the clamp to make sure the second one wouldn't create another gap. And here's the finished result. It helped me tremendously to organize all my craft and studio materials. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to see another video like this, you can click the card right up here or click here for another playlist. And I will see you in the next video.